Yo, what is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Ken. Today, I'm going to be giving you my 1400K BIOS settings using an Asus motherboard. And my apologies for the delay because I have been testing a lot of things and I'm also working on my Civica Q review. If you want to see my review for the Civica Q, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Discuss and see 800 FPS and spawn. Play and face it right now. 5.8 gigahertz, 1.279 volts, 1.27. What we're working with is an SB96, terrible CPU. Um, just to answer some questions before I start, why am I not using my 9800X3D rig? Personally, I honestly prefer my Intel rig. It's just better in every single way. Um, gaming, since I game at 1080p, yes, 9800X3D is about 5% to 8% faster, but outside gaming, window snappiness um any everything is just way faster than 9800x3d so i don't know what to tell you guys like i'm not a fanboy i have both systems if this video gets a decent amount of views i might share you my 9800x3d settings as well but for now let's focus on this video so first um i don't know why it's all the way down anyways extreme tweaker ai overclock tuner set to manual Set these to 100, your BCLK and PCIe, Intel Adaptive Boost Technology, Auto, Asus Multicore Enhancement, Auto, SVID Behavior, Auto, BCLK Frequency, 100, 100, Memory Controller, Gear 2. Now, do not copy my DRAM frequency and my voltage, but use it as a baseline. So if you don't have a 2D motherboard, if you don't have an Apex, Apex Encore, or a Z790i Lightning, chances are you're not going to be able to run 8200 but if you have a gigabyte refresh motherboard or an astrock nova you usually max around like 7800 7600 is very easy to do with these boards um, some boards can do 8000 um, depending on your cpu imc as well so just something to keep in mind then flex disabled performance core ratio sync all cores set it to 5.8 you could also run 5.7 here. If you want, you can also run stock, which is 5.6. Efficient core ratio, sync all cores, set it to 44. Um, I tested 44 versus 45. Um, it doesn't really do anything for gaming. So I'm just leaving mine at 44. Now go to advance under CPU config. You wanna keep scrolling down. Make sure hardware prefetcher is disabled. Make sure this one is also disabled. Now virtualization, I don't need it. I just set it to disabled. If you play Valorant, leave this on enabled. Per P core control disabled. Per E core control disabled. Active P cores all, active E cores all. Hyper threading, make sure to disable hyper threading. Since we are mainly gaming with this PC, we don't need hyper threading. I find it that P core, E core, hyper threading on, it's way faster in gaming than having everything turned on. And also, disabling hyper threading uses less voltage and also it runs a little bit cooler. So it's a win win situation. And by the way, you already have 24 cores, so you don't really need hyper threading. Just disable this you get better FPS and also better 1% lows. Total memory encryption disabled, legacy game compatibility mode disabled, CPU power management control, boot performance mode, set it to turbo performance, disable speed step, disable speed shift technology, turbo mode enabled, C states enabled, disable enhanced C states, package limit auto, Thermal monitor, I don't use it, disabled, and dual TAU boost disabled. Now we are going back to Extreme Tweaker page. I want to show you my 
Ram Timings. Uh, shout out to Hammer2K. Follow him on Twitter. Very nice gentleman. He actually helped me tighten up my timings because I was running 36, 48, 48, 48, 84. And, you know, this gentleman actually helped me. So I just want to shout him out. Um, like I said before, I'm not a good overclocker, you know, uh, especially with Intel platform. I have been maining my AMD rig for about a year, like my 1700X3D, and I have more experience with AMD. So anyways, um, yeah, this is my timings. Also go under memory training algo, make sure round trip latency is enabled. Should be right here make sure that is enabled here is my third timings 64 48 go all the way down look for mrc fast boot make sure that is disabled and scroll all the way down configure Memory dynamic frequency switching, make sure these are all disabled. Now exit that and go to auto voltage cap or internal CPU power management. Set max CPU core temp to 100, fast throttle to auto, package temp to 100, regulate frequency, leave it on auto. Unlimited ICC max disabled, CPU core 400, power limit 253 for both. And Dual TAU boost disabled AC and DC load line. We are just going to be leaving it on auto since we are running static V core or fixed V core anyway. So there's no need for us to configure that. If I was running adaptive, then we have to configure these, but we don't in this case. Make sure your CEP is disabled, IACEP, SACEP also disabled, and that's about it. We also don't need VR voltage limit. So, whoa, whoa, we're not done yet. Um, under thermal velocity boost, disable all of these. Okay, scroll down, look for ring down bin, set that to disabled. Make sure your minimum and max CPU cache ratio is set to 50. If it's not stable at 50, set it to 48. But if you have a 1400K without hyper threading on, I mean, you should be able to run 50. For 14700K, I'm not sure if you can run 50, but you can try 50. If it doesn't work, use 48 for both. BCLK aware adaptive voltage, disabled actual VRM core voltage, set it to manual mode. Now use this as a baseline, 1.3 volts. In Windows, it reads as like 1.28. I don't know why, but or 1.29 basically, but set this to 1.3 volts and I forgot. Um, go to DGVRM, make sure your load line is CPU load line calibration set to level seven. Or you can also try level six, see if it's stable. But anyways, again, use this as a baseline. Try 5.8, run stability test. If it's stable, go down by 0.1 like 1.29 if it's stable go down by 1.28 until it becomes unstable then what you need to do is you know go up by 0.1 we test again let's say you found your wall at like 1.26 or 1.25 if it's not stable go up by 0.1 1.26 and if it's like stable and then it aired out Go back up by 0.1 and then if it's like stable then just just leave it at that that's, that'll be your um, voltage and all the way down you don't need to copy these this is for my memory running 1.24 SA it's a little too high but it is what it is high DRAM voltage enabled uh, VDD is 1.53 for my VRAM VDDQ 1.51 Memory voltage 1.35 on my VDDQ and for my IMC is 1.4. Okay, go to advanced again. Platform miscellaneous config, make sure this is disabled, the PCI Express native power management. And under system agent configuration, make sure VTD is disabled. 
under PCH storage config since I'm only using NVMe and we don't have any SSD. Um, just disable this. Under thermal config, go disable DTT over here. Trusted computing. Uh, what else am I missing? PCIe subsystem. Now, if you use rebar, you want to try 4G decoding, enable it. Um, basically, in my experience, it works better with this. I get more FPS with 4G decoding disabled. So, you know, you got to test it out for yourself and see. It varies from game to game. So, USB config, disable legacy USB support and handoff. Network stack disabled and all the way down onboard devices config. Um, just disable things that you don't need. Now I, I need USB audio, leave it enabled. I use Intel LAN, this is my wire connection. This one, it depends on you, but I like to charge my phone when my PC is off. So I just leave USB power delivery and soft off state in, on enabled. Wi-Fi controller, I don't use Wi-Fi, so I just disable it. Bluetooth controller, I don't use Bluetooth, I just disable it. If you don't want RGB, you can disable it through here. Q code LED function, you can disable it or you can have postcode only. Do whatever you want. And it's personal preference from here. And next thing you want to do is configure your Q fan control. This is my top exhaust on my RAD, as you guys can see, running at 50%. Then it just ramps up around like 80% to like 100. And this is my, this is nothing. This is my intake for my bottom fan and side fan intakes. I'm running it at like 75%. And then once I, if I ever hit 90, it will ramp up to like 100%. And make sure your AIO pump is running at 100%. It's okay to run your AIO at 100% because it actually lasts longer that way because it always runs at like a constant speed versus like, you know, a config that goes up, down, up, down, up, down. You know what I'm saying? Because you're putting more wear on your AIO by having it like one different speeds at all times. You know what I'm saying? So it's just better to just run it at constantly 100%. And don't forget to... Go to Ace's user profile and save your profile. You know, um, my recommendation for you is to tune your CPU first. You know, find your stable voltage. And once your CPU is disabled, you can move on to your memory.